Hi everybody and welcome to part B of example 5. We are still looking at page 50 in the workbook here and the instructions are kind of up at the top of the page here so let me remind you of what they're asking us here. They'd like us to find the matrix of this transformation T taking us from beta coordinates to gamma coordinates. Okay so similar type of question as what we just did in part A just that the function's a little bit more complicated. So this time we've got a transformation that's going from P2 of R to P3 of R, and our formula looks like this. Okay, so process is gonna be the same here. We're gonna start by um, taking the basis that's going with our inputs, and that's this, beta. We'll substitute those vectors in one at a time, Okay, into our transformation. So starting with t of 1, then t of x, and then finally t of x squared. Okay, so if we want to calculate t of 1, okay, we need to use this formula. And the first time you see something like this, this might be a little confusing. So the formula says we want to take f of 2 plus x times f of x plus x squared times f prime of x. Okay, how do we do all of that? Well, the thing to remember as you're reading through that is that f of x is what's being substituted in here. Okay, so to do this first calculation, we're thinking of f of x as being 1. And the first thing that we come to in this formula is they'd like us to write down f of 2. So here's my question to you. If f of x is equal to 1, what would f of 2 be? Okay, well, it would be like saying we're going to substitute 2 in for x, but if our output is 1, regardless of what the x is that goes in, we're just going to get 1 out of that. Okay, so the upshot of all of this is, is that that first term, f of 2, is going to become 1 in this case. And then moving on to the next term here, x f of x, we're going to get x times f of x, which is just 1. And then finally, x squared times the derivative of f of x. Well, what's the derivative of f of x equals 1? That's just going to be 0. Okay, so what we wind up with here then is, let's see, just 1 plus x it looks like. And we're ready then to move on to the next calculation. Okay, t of x. And same deal here. This time the f of x that we're plugging in looks like x. Okay, so let's go back up here and do that again. So if we start from the assumption that f of x is equal to x, then the first thing that we need to calculate would be f of 2. Okay, if f of x is equal to x, then f of 2 is 2. So that's the first thing we're going to write down. And then we come to x times f of x. That's going to be x times, and here's our f of x. It's just equal to x. All right, and then finally, x squared times the derivative of x, which would be 1. Okay, and if you do the arithmetic there, this time you're going to get, let's see, 2 plus x squared, it looks like. Huh? Or, I'm no, no, sorry, 2 plus 2x squared. Okay, there's 2x squared sitting there. Okay, and then finally, we're ready for t of x squared. So this time, our f of x looks like x squared. Be clear a little clutter away here. Okay, so we want to take x squared and substitute it into this formula. So the first thing we need to do is calculate f of 2. And if f of x is x squared, that means that f of 2 is 2 squared, which is 4. So that's going to be our first thing here. And then we move on to x f of x. Okay, so that's going to be x times f of x, which is x squared. Okay, and then finally, x squared times the derivative of f of x. Derivative of x squared is 2x. Okay, and if you simplify that down this time, we're going to get, let's see, 4 plus x cubed plus... 4 plus x cubed plus 2x cubed. That's going to be 4 plus 3x cubed, it looks like. Okay, so we've done our calculations. That was kind of a little bit of work in and, in and of itself. Okay, let me clear a little space here. And now what we want to do is to focus on our second, the, 
the, the basis that goes with our output values, that's gamma in this case, and ask, can we take these three outputs and write them as linear combinations of that gamma basis? Okay, well, fortunately, the gamma basis is kind of nice. It's a standard basis, so we just need to fill in these blanks. Okay, and then finally that. Okay, and again, because these are standard bases, that's not difficult to do. To get a 1 plus x, we need a 1 here and a here, zeros there. And 2 plus 2x squared, we need a 2 there, 2 in front of the x squared. And then, let's see, 4 plus 3x squared, we're going to need a 4, 0, 0, and a 3, it looks like. Okay. And as we've seen before, the matrix that we're looking for, going from beta to gamma, we're just going to look up at the calculations that we did and identify our columns. So first column would look like that, 1, 1, 0, 0, okay, and so on. So the next one would be 2, 0, 2, 0, and then finally 4, 0, 0, 3. Okay, and there is our matrix for T.